Hi, would you like to hear a story? It's a very long story, so I'm going to have to read some of it from the book. It's the story of Hansel and Gretel. Once upon a time, a woodcutter lived in the woods with his two children from his first wife and his new second wife. Well, at one point, there was a great famine in the land, and there wasn't enough food to eat. One night, when they were lying in bed, the woodcutter said to his wife, What am I going to do? I cannot think of a way to find more food. And the stepmother said, I'll tell you what. We have to get rid of those two children. We barely have enough food for ourselves. Tomorrow, why don't we take them into the woods when you go to cut wood and leave them there? The woodcutter said, No! I can't do that to my children. I would rather starve all of us together than leave them in the woods to be eaten by beasts. But the stepmother kept nagging and nagging at him, and finally, reluctantly, the woodcutter agreed. Well, the children had not been asleep. They were awake in their room, and they heard this whole plan. Gretel began to cry, and Hansel said to her, don't worry, little sister, I have a plan. So he slipped out of bed and out of the cottage and went outside. And in the darkness, by the light of the moon, he saw shiny pebbles on the ground. And he collected them and soon filled his pockets with the pebbles and snuck back into the house. Well, early the next morning, the stepmother woke them up and said, wake up, lazy children. It's time to go in the woods and start collecting some wood while your father and I cut wood. Here's a little piece of bread for your lunch, but don't eat it too soon because it's all you're going to get until we come home tomorrow night for supper. Well, they all left to go into the woods, but every once in a while, Hansel would stop and look back at his house. His, his stepmother said, what are you looking at all the time? And Hansel said, Oh, I'm just watching my little kitten who's on the roof of the house waving goodbye to me. The stepmother said, Don't be ridiculous. That's just the light shining off the roof. But really, Hansel had been stopping and dropping shiny pebbles along the path so he could find his way home again. When they got deep into the woods, they built a fire and the stepmother said, you two stay here by the fire and collect kindling while your father and I go out and chop wood. Well, the children collected sticks and they sat by the fire and they had their little piece of bread for lunch. And soon they grew tired and they lay down and go to sleep. When they woke up, it was dark out and there was no sign of their father or stepmother anywhere in the woods. Little Gretel began to cry, and her brother said, Don't worry, I'll get us home. So he took Gretel by the hand, and in the moonlight, they saw the shiny pebbles, and they followed them back home to their little cottage. When they got home, the stepmother pretended to be very angry with them and said, Well, you foolish children, why didn't you come home when you were supposed to? But the father was overjoyed to see his children again and so glad that they weren't left in the woods. Well, a few weeks later, again, there was no food in the house. And again, the stepmother kept saying to the father at night, we have to get rid of those children. We're all going to starve. We have to take them deeper into the woods this time so they can't find their way home. Well, Again, the children hadn't been sleeping because they were so hungry, and they heard the plan. Gretel started to cry, and Hansel said, Don't worry, sister. I, I'll take care of us. So he snuck out of bed and went to go out and find some pebbles. But this time, the stepmother had locked the door. Early the next morning, she woke them up and said, wake up, you lazy children. It's time to go in the woods and gather some wood. So she took them and the, step and the woodcutter took them out into the woods. As they were walking along, 
Hansel kept stopping and turning around and looking at the house. His stepmother said, what are you doing? And Hansel, Hansel said, well, I'm just watching that little pigeon that's sitting on the roof of our house. And the stepmother said, that's not a pigeon. It's just the sunlight gleaming off the chimney. But actually, what Hansel was doing was dropping little pieces of his bread for his lunch along the path so he could follow them and find his way back home again. Well, this time, the stepmother and the woodcutter took them much deeper into the woods than they had ever gone before. And they said, they made a fire and they said, you sit here by the fire and um, have your lunch and rest and we'll come back and get you. And Gretel got very nervous and the stepmother said, don't worry, we won't be far. Well, the children sat by the fire and they thought they could hear their father chopping wood but it was really only an old tree branch that the stepmother had tied to the tree. And when it blew in the wind, they thought it was the sound of their father chopping wood. Well, Gretel shared her little piece of bread for lunch with her brother, and then they fell asleep by the fire. When they woke up, it was very dark out and the moon was up. Gretel started to cry, but Hansel said, don't worry, little sister, we'll just follow the breadcrumbs back to our house. But when they got up and went to, to the path to look for the breadcrumbs, the birds had eaten them all up. Now they were getting very worried, and they started wandering through the woods, hoping to find the path again. But nothing looked familiar. They walked all that night and all the next day with nothing to eat. They were growing so hungry and so faint, they feared they would never live to see another day. As they walked, they suddenly came to a clearing. And in that clearing, they saw a beautiful gingerbread house. The walls were made out of gingerbread. The roof was made out of cake. The windows were made out of sponge sugar. And, and the doorknobs were all made out of little sugar canes. They ran over to the house and they broke off a piece of the roof and they were eating it. And suddenly they heard an old woman inside the house call, who's that nibbling at my house? And Gretel said, uh, it's just a little mouse, nothing to worry about. And they bit off another piece of the house and they ate it, it tasted so good. And they heard the old woman say, who's that nibbling at my house? And Gretel said, it's just me, a little sparrow. I'm just nibbling at your house a little. But the old woman came out and she, she said, oh, children, are you hungry? Why don't you come in and I'll make you pancakes and milk and give you a lovely meal. So the children followed her into the house and after they had eaten their fill, she took them up to a little room where there were two little beds with soft blankets and said, stay here for a while and rest. You must be so tired. Well, Hansel and Gretel got into bed and they were so happy. For once their tummies were full and they slept. Early the next morning, the witch, who was really a mean lady who liked to lure little children into her house and then cook them and eat them. She woke up Hansel and she grabbed him by the arm and pulled him out to the yard and stuck him in a great big cage and locked the cage door. Then she woke, went back and woke up Gretel and said, come on, you lazy girl. You're going to help me cook and fatten up your brother so he's nice and fat and I can eat him. Well, Gretel cried and cried, but what could she do? So every day she helped the old witch make big chicken dinners and waffles and ice cream and everything and serve them to Hansel to make him fat. And the witch, who couldn't see it all, every day would go out to the cage and say to Hansel, stick out your finger, let me see if you're getting any fatter. But Hansel, instead of sticking out his finger, would stick out a little chicken bone that he had saved. And the witch would feel it and say, hmm, 
you don't seem to be getting any fatter. Well, after a month, the witch had had enough. She said to Gretel, tomorrow I'm cooking your brother. I don't care if he's gotten any fatter or not. And so the next day, she um, got the stove really hot and the oven really hot. And she said to Gretel, um, put your head in the oven and tell me if it's hot enough. And Gretel, who didn't trust the, the witch, thought, that witch is going to cook me too. So she said to the witch, I can't tell if it's hot enough. Show me how to do that. And the witch said, oh, you stupid girl, it's so easy. You just stick your head in the oven like this. And she stuck her own head in the oven and Gretel pushed her in and locked the oven door. And even though the witch screamed, Gretel would not open the door and the witch cooked and died. Gretel took the keys and ran out to the yard and opened the cage and let her dear brother out. She said, Hansel, now that the witch is dead, we're free to leave here. And Hansel said, before we leave, let's look around the witch's house. And when they did, they found chests full of diamonds and pearls and jewels. And they stuffed their pockets with as many as they could hold. And they went off to find their house. They walked and walked. And after a while, the wood started to look familiar again. And they found the path to get back home. Well, in this time, the mean stepmother had died and their father had sat in the house so lonely and so missing his two children. So when they walked in the door, you can imagine how happy he was to see them again. They all hugged and kissed and the father said, I have missed you so much. I'm so glad you're home and safe. And the children said, not only are we safe, but look what we have. And they emptied their pockets with all the diamonds and pearls and jewels. And they showed them all to their father. And the father said, now we have enough money to buy food to last us forever. And so the three of them lived happily in that house till the end of their days. The end. Was that a good story? I love you. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.